Hi, thank you all for joining today. Uh, my name is Sam Goodwin. I was detained on, mm -hmm. <clears throat> on false charges in Syria in 2019. And I spent the first half of my captivity held in solitary confinement. And during this time, I never saw another inmate, but every day I would hear the sounds of them being beaten in neighboring cells. And these are sounds that I'll never forget. I was later reassigned to a large federal prison and kept with thousands of other Syrians. These men were among the most welcoming, kind, and, and overall remarkable people I've met anywhere in the world. I remember one evening mentioning to a, to a fellow inmate, everyone here is is being so nice to me. And, you know, it was just hard to expect what you might find in a Syrian prison. And he said, Sam, in Syria, all the good people are here in prison because all the bad people are outside putting us in here. Again, words I'll never forget. Thank God and thanks to countless people who worked tirelessly for my safe release, I'm here today but many are not. Many are still missing in these horrific conditions. So let this be a reminder that there's always more work to do. I will now read a letter that uh, we were uh, in somewhat unprecedented fashion able to obtain from a current Syrian detainee being held in a civilian prison. As kids, we were always told to be patient over the challenges we face, as one day we will turn these challenges into stories to tell our children. And when I was detained, my fellow inmates would always tell me that our only revenge would be to tell our stories. One day, they said. So here I am, taking the only revenge I can get. I write to you today as we approach the 10th anniversary of the uprising and the ninth anniversary of the last kiss I gave to my mother's hands. In 2012, I was told effectively by Syrian intelligence officers that I should remember the day I was detained as my new birthday and that they would make sure I would want to forget it. They marked the days on my feet, fingernails, and a month's worth of hands. How lucky I am it was only early March. Over the years, I've witnessed death more times than I can count and I've seen it face to face. We became so familiar with each other, but I always stayed sharp to remember the faces, the names, and the stories behind it to be able to tell it one day to my kids and to the world. In March of 2011, we have decided to break the chains we were born with and to tell those who enslaved us that we were made to be free and to tell the world and you who are reading my letter today that we belong to a world where we are not punished for thinking differently, for demanding dignity and freedom, for wanting a responsible government, and for yearning to walk tall as every being on this earth is meant to. Since I moved here four years ago, I was told by the new arrivals that the walls of silence around Syria have been destroyed. I heard about the children who were gassed by sarin in their sleep. I heard about the villages that were destroyed by barrel bombs. I heard about the millions who have flown their children to the sea so they can get a merciful death better than the one we see here every day. And I heard about the images that you've all seen, the images of those who have cried over the years, the images of those who were luckier than us. So I wonder, as I quickly put this together, why do I write to you what you already know? Why do I write what you already know and what you have already heard? I wonder how many more need to die of torture, of bombardment, and of hopelessness. How many generations would need to continue to live in fear? I know you know the answer. Do not let us down.